because the way Joe Root plays naturally is the way Joe Root gets thousands of runs. And yes, he's learned a few new tricks. Even, even though Pakistan lost that last series to England two years ago, you know, there were still some there were still some very fine performances in amongst it. And it needed one or two special moments. Robinson, um, Anderson, both of whom won't be in Pakistan this time. Pakistan cricket at its best. One minute down, next minute up. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining me once again. Saj Sadiq here on behalf of Passion.net website, bringing you another big-name interview. My guest today, when it comes to elegance, when it came to battling, he was the icon, really, for elegant battling. 117 test matches, 114 ODIs, over 11,000 runs for England, all done with his style um, that everybody um, was aware of him. And uh, his test average, 44.25, former England captain. And he's a hugely popular commentator these days, working for Sky in the past. And these days, he works on projects such as the Pakistan Super League, etc. The one and only David Gower. Thank you very much, David, for your time. No worries. No worries. Good to see you. David, um, let's talk Pakistan, England, because uh, obviously that's the upcoming test series. Last time around, England comfortable winners three nil, and uh, Pakistan have lost the five Test matches. Uh, last, sorry, they've lost the last five Test matches. Should be a formality, shouldn't it, for England? Um, that's a very dangerous thing, isn't it? It's always a very dangerous thing to assume anything. Um, I mean, in fact, okay, England have lost their last Test match, and people were talking about, you know, were they taking it a bit casually? Were they making too many, you know, false assumptions? Um, so at no stage do I ever subscribe to those series. I think England will know that if they're going to win again as they did last time, they will need the same sort of skills. Um, obviously, they've got a different squad, a largely different squad. They're going to need the same skills. They're going to need the names of the same sort of bits of luck or those moments that turn things. I mean, if you look back a couple of years ago, um, both the first two out of the three test matches went almost to the end of the fifth day. And in fact, the second one, the one in Multan last time round, um, such a good pitch that Pakistan almost looks as though they might make a massive total to come first batting fourth. Whereas in Pindi, you know, that final wicket only went down as the sun was just about to disappear. And it needed one or two special moments. Robinson, um, Anderson, both of whom won't be in Pakistan this time, had to produce magic moments at just the right time to keep chipping away for that to be the first win of the series. So, I think England will make no assumptions. I think they'll try and play in much the same way, but they've got new players in both batting and bowling who will need to experience it for the first time. You've obviously got a keen eye on Pakistani cricket, David, and um, you know everybody knows you're very knowledgeable about international cricket. In your opinion, what is going wrong with Pakistan? Because the, the fans are fuming, the media is not happy, uh, the Pakistan Cricket mm. Board are making changes here, there and everywhere. So it just seems to be in a bit of a uh, bit of chaos at the moment, as usual. Well, <laughs> I mean, yes, it, I'm afraid it's something of a cliche, isn't it? You know, the, un, the, the only predictable thing about Pakistan cricket for donkey's years has been the unpredictability. And yet when I was there over the last three or four years, I mean, I could see the talent that was there, that is there. Um, you know, as you mentioned at the start, you know, a couple of PSLs, two or three PSLs, and you see a lot of talent uh, in there. You see um, the strengths, um, for instance. I mean, even even though Pakistan lost that last series to England two years ago, you know, there were still some there were still some very fine performances in amongst it. England just had the had you know all the right skills at the right times. And what tends to happen? It doesn't matter. And this is not solely Pakistan, let's face it, let's be honest about this. You know, any country, any team where things start to slide, you start to talk about the captain, you start to talk about the selectors, you start to talk about the board, you start to... Every excuse under the sun always comes out, whether we're West Indies, Pakistan, New Zealand, England, Australia. Um, you know, if, if Australia loses the Ashes, they have inquiries because something's obviously gone horribly wrong. Uh, likewise, if England loses the Ashes, you have a... Um, you know, big sit down. And, well, what's gone wrong? Something obviously very terrible has gone wrong. Um, but what it needs always under these circumstances is someone just to take control. I mean, I've seen some of the comments from Shah Massoud, who is a, you know, he's a bright man, he's an intelligent man. Um, and he's obviously come up against problems 
trying to capture the size, some, something to do with injury, something to do with form, something to do with maybe the general atmosphere, just in the whole camp. I mean, who knows? It's very hard from any sort of distance outside of a camp to know exactly what's going on inside that camp. But the, the usual rules apply. If you get off to, I mean, you'll start a new series like this, and Pakistan will have to believe, even though they lost their last series against Bangladesh, have to believe that um, they have the ability to do well, the ability to turn things around. And if you if you get off to a good start, you know, good first day, good second day, good first game, then from there, that little sort of acorn, big oak trees of confidence grow. And that's that's the only way forward. Going into a series, though, confidence has to be key, David. And um, as I said at the mm. start, losing your last five test matches and um, you know losing to your opponent three 0 at home last time around that that doesn't go, um, you know give you a lot of confidence, does it? No, um, no, I agree. Um, it is the worst possible situation to come into a new series from. But I mean, I, I mean, if, if you know, history tells you lots of things, um, although most people tend to ignore history once it's gone for four or five years down the line, it gets forgotten, and lessons likewise get forgotten. But actually. Yeah, in my career, in sort of the, the eras since 90s, 2000s, you know, into the 2020s, sides have their ups and downs, for sure. And, I mean, nowadays there is so much um, extra assistance. You know, in, in the bad old days, not to use the expression good old days, in the bad old days, you had a captain, you had an assistant manager, that was it. You might have had a physiotherapist, and somehow if things were down, it was down to those two or three people to try and lift the mood. Now you've got maybe sometimes too much help, but you just need a dominant character to say, right, this is how we're going to do it. Uh, and you always start, you know, every series starts nil-nil. So you, you, know, you have to try and push aside the bad and say, right, this is uh, another attempt at a fresh start. So every series, every series starts even. And it just takes, what does it take? It takes a couple of good individual performances, be it a batsman making 150 or a, you know, a bowler picking up five or six wickets uh, to change the momentum, just to sort of arrest the slide and say, right, actually, these are the things we can build on. And I, mean, I know there have been changes in the Pakistan squad, um, uh, certainly since we were last there, and over, you know, over the last few months as well. There's been ups and downs, ins and outs. Um, we know. I mean, I also know it doesn't help that, of course, you know the selectors themselves. You know, there, there's there is no, or well, doesn't seem to be a sort of rigid, solid, firmly based system in place at the moment. And that's kind of what you need. I mean, England, I think, over the last two or three years, since Rob Key has been our sort of chief exec of English cricket, you know, Rob's made some very good decisions. He's brought in some good coaches. And the culture they've bred in the England team, well, it's you know, it's brilliant. I think it's absolutely brilliant. But let's face it, they've also failed, for instance, to win the Ashes a year ago when they could easily have done that, or maybe, let's put it another way, should have done that. But one or two key mistakes cost them dear in that, in, in that series. They've had a good summer, yes, but against opposition that they were very much expected to beat. Um, they've, also produced, they've also found some new players, and they seem to have bedded in very well. Jamie Smith with the bat and with the gloves. Um, Gus Anderson with the um, Atkinson, sorry, Gus Anderson, a misspeak. Gus Atkinson with the ball. You know, what a brilliant start he's had uh, over the six test matches he's played. Uh, but they have to come and experience new conditions uh, in Pakistan. So I think everyone's aware, as we said at the start, everyone's aware that nothing comes easily. As a former great batsman yourself, um, David, you know about the ups and downs, the highs and lows of international cricket. Um, Barbara Azam's experiencing a, a sort of a, let's just say, a, a low in terms of his uh, test mm. batting at the moment, number of innings without a test 50. Any advice for uh, for Barbara? I mean, there was an extraordinary thing, wasn't there? I mean, I saw something on Twitter months ago. He'd retired and thought, that can't be right. You know, a man of his age, of his talent, uh, turned out to be a spoof, turned out to be some sort of misinformation. Um, well, let's face it. I mean, you've got a lot of people who've played this game and played it exceptionally well. And Barbara is one of the best. So what happens to everyone is at some stage, uh, the luck goes against you. And you, we, we mentioned that word confidence already countless times. Um, if your confidence drops, you know, the game suddenly becomes harder. Um, if you suddenly go for a run of scores which don't match your expectations, so you're not getting 50s, you're not getting 100s, um, 
then little men in your mind start to get more active. And it's, you know, it is where the psychologists are so valuable, where the strength of character within is so valuable. He must know that he's a good player, you know, one of the best players in the world at the moment. Um, therefore, he has to believe personally. And you've got to almost take yourself away, uh, not out of the team, because the team is there to give you support. And the team should be wishing him well because he's such an important player. But you've got the team team sort of atmosphere that helps you along. But as an individual, you have to look so very deeply into that mirror and sort of look into your eyes and say, and look into your brain and say, you know, what's going wrong? What can I do? Um, try not to let yourself get distracted by new theories because what's worked for him so well for many, many years is what should surely work for him again. And he's not the first batsman to have a run of form that goes well below expectation. Some of the great side played against Greg Chappell had a whole series of ducks. Um, myself, you know, ideas where things just weren't clicking and you think, well, how, you know, why is this happening? And eventually, you know, things come through. You, you get through it and you realise that you're still a very good player. Um, you know, everyone, absolutely everyone who's ever played test cricket will have had a, a runner score sometimes uh, or at some stage where it's not going as well as it should do. And it will change. A quick word on Joe Root, David, whose appetite for runs mm. just never seems to end, does it? Well, Joe's lovely. I mean, everyone knows him to be the loveliest man um, and he has the loveliest talent. Um, the years of captaincy, I thought, were extraordinary because the pressure obviously told on him, but it didn't seem to stop him scoring runs. And that's one of the times where, with those extraneous pressures, you suddenly find yourself with too much to think about, not focused necessarily on the art of batting, and you don't make the runs you expect to. But since the captaincy was taken off his shoulders and since he settled back into his role as... You know, one of the world's most brilliant batsmen and senior player in this England team. And once also, actually, it had a bit of a think, obviously, I suggest, about how he's going to play. Because the way Joe Root plays naturally is the way Joe Root gets thousands of runs. And yes, he's learned a few new tricks. And sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But if he just bats and bats and bats, Joe Root gets runs. And he makes it look so easy. So I think he's now probably found a you know, happy mid-ground between being part of this England team that likes to experiment and likes to be very much on the front foot in a um, yeah, in an attitudinal sort of way. And between that and the way he plays naturally, and I think he's found that balance now this, this past summer because he made runs again for fun this last summer. Uh, so he's he's probably yeah, just looking forward to it because he just, you know, it's one of those very simple things. He just loves batting. Pakistani fans will be delighted to know that uh, you're part of the commentary team for the Pakistan versus England series, uh, David. Obviously, during the PSL, you've been hugely popular with Pakistani fans as well. I mean, you've gone out there as a as a player, as a commentator. What are your general experiences of going out to Pakistan? Uh, generally very good. Um, I mean, this time around, of course, we had a slight hitch because it took the PCB a long time, far too long, I had to say, to decide which order to play the games and exactly where. So we've had, you know, preparations have been uh, a little bit delayed. In fact, I'd like quite like a visa to come through. That, that would be help. That would be very helpful before I try and get on a plane. But the, um, I mean, the, gen the general feeling when one is in Pakistan and when one has a bit of spare time as well is that it's just very friendly because although inevitably around the cricket last time, as an example, very good example, there was so much security uh, around those three test matches uh, for all the obvious reasons, and it must cost millions of dollars, which you know, the PCB would rather not spend, I'm sure, and the government would rather not spend. But it's it's one of those things that everyone has to live with. Um, but apart from that, we had all the usual experiences, you know, great food around the place, you know, the competition for, you know, the best foodie city between Karachi and Lahore. I had to answer that question um, from Zainab on, on air one day. with Zainab and Aruj both saying, you know, one from Lahore, one from Karachi, saying, come on, Tell us which is the best food. And, of course, experience tells you that, that is not the time to come down on either side. Just to say, no, they are both excellent. So um, this trip, I'm due to spend a few days in Lahore in between test matches. Um, obviously, we end up in um, Islamabad as well for the for the Pindi test match. And, and I know from previous experience, although we've got a couple of weeks in Multan, you know, there's plenty of places one, if one's allowed to get there and, and eat well. So um, the overall thing is, yeah, we know that the most important thing, actually, is we know that people love their cricket in Pakistan. And so for any of us to make the trip there, you know, we're made very welcome. Um, for the Pakistani fans, obviously what they would love is to see their side regain 
some form collectively. Uh, and that would make the experience for the home fans that much better. But for the, I mean, there'll be groups. I mean, I have a group coming up with a company called Black Opal, who will be in Lahore for a few days before that final test match in Pindi. And all those groups will come you know, to watch some good cricket, um, to experience Pakistan at its best, uh, to experience the hospitality. And I mean, I've always said to people when they say, well, you know, what's it going to be like? I said, well, just relax. You'll love it. You know, it's, it's, it's a very good place to visit. And finally, David, uh, Pakistani fans are looking at this series with um, sort of a, a lot of fear, um, as I say, given the recent mm. form and the turmoil in, in Pakistan cricket um, recently. Do you give them any chance, any hope of uh, beating England or even winning a test match? Uh, yes. Um, I'm not just saying that to be supportive of Pakistan for the sake of being supportive. Um, because, again, if you add, you know, it, whatever's happened recently and you know, over the last year or so, whatever's happened, um, going back over what I said before, they have to believe in themselves that they have the right sort of skills to do well. And just, and again, just to remember that England, you know, I think England's a very good team. I think they're a very good side and they've proven that they travel well nowadays. Um, but there are still things that can go wrong. You know, there are still moments of madness. There are still uh, things that are, potentially, we say, peculiarly Pakistani with pitches. And although last time the pitches, two very good ones, one turned uh, in Karachi, but Karachi isn't, isn't a venue this time. So there are lots of things can happen. And, I mean, for instance, I, I suppose in a sense, you know, on the back of five losing test matches, one would say, well, even a drawn game would be a step in the right direction. Uh, if you, for instance, if, if Pakistan as a team come out with a draw in the first test match, as an example, that gives you know, a little bit of a fillip. Um, I suspect that if they're going to play two test matches in a row in Multan in quick succession, well, you know, there might be a bit of something going on with that second pitch. First one might be beautifully flat. Second one, who knows? I mean, I'm, I'm talking from a distance of thousands of miles, thousands of miles here. You know, you might have two very good pitches. But you've, you've got to believe there's opportunities. Um, and I mean, as a professional sportsman, as an international sportsman, you know, you're not worth the description unless you believe in yourself and believe in those opportunities. David, always a pleasure hearing your views and uh, I hope you have a fantastic time out there. Hope we watch some great cricket and I uh, hope it's a pretty even contest as well. So once again, really appreciate your time. Have a great, great trip out to uh, Pakistan and all the best. Thank you. Well, Sash, thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, looking forward to good cricket, as you say. Um, I mean, I'm not going to predict any results. That's always a heinous crime nowadays. Uh, very hard to predict things. Just looking forward to a great series and, and a great trip. Many thanks, David. All the best. My pleasure. Okay, take care. Take care.